Hi, Emily. Thank you so much for being here with me on Revitalized Womanhood. I'm so excited to have you with me today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad we finally yes. were able to get together on this and do the podcast. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you. I'm so excited. Well, I obviously gave my listeners your lowdown of your bio before we came yeah. on, so I didn't have to waste your time because you've heard it so many <laughs> times, and it takes about 10 minutes to read through it. So we it's got so that bad. out of the way. <laughs> it's we so, so bad. We got that out of the way. I love it. I love the your, – your components are so different, too, from – and actually not at the same time. Different but not. But I love that you went from – your flower boutique shop to writing cookbooks to the you know paper but you first yeah. you did Andy stuff with him and then you went to your stationary stuff and then you well I still I still run Andy's brands you what was that I said I still I still am the CEO of Andy's brands his no, personal yes, brands yes, and exactly. art syndicate yeah yeah you yeah. got into that and then you yeah so your whole mentality through this whole process has kind of been pivot mm-hmm. pivot 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 this is going to be this, and this is going to be this, and now this is going to be this, and I love that about you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a multi-passionate for sure. It's like I just don't, I don't want to settle on just one thing because I like too many different things. (laughs) So my question for that for you is jumping right into these deep questions is what was your why when you first started it all? When you, when you first started your why for when, before you bought your boutique, I know that your mm -hmm. dad was an entrepreneur and you were raised in that mindset of entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. work. What was your why when you started that? For every single company I've ever launched, started, been involved with from my first business when I was 20 to now having the paper and plan company and some other things, it's always been because there's not any there. I've never been able to find anything that I liked. You know, I started my flower shop. I found a need in the market and there was a void and I wanted to fill it. So flower shop, you know, I was 20 years old. I grew up in a small farm town. There was no place to buy gifts or get a beautiful flower arrangement or rent tuxedos or have a wedding planner. There was not any of that. So I decided to start that. With my, you know, cookbooks. That's why I started, you know, writing my cookbooks is because I wanted to take my health seriously and I couldn't find any cookbooks that were, you know, real world recipes. And I say that meaning it didn't require these crazy expensive ingredients or stuff you'd have to order online. And like I wrote that book thinking, okay, I'm in my small farm community. What could I go to the local grocery store and find everything I need for it? And I couldn't find books like that. So I wrote a couple cookbooks that were that um, planners. I could not find planner and stationery that I just loved. It was like cheap paper, poor quality. I just didn't like the layouts of it. So I thought, let me start my own. And so I wrote, you know, started my own and cause I wanted it to be something that I would like. So that's really it. It's the why has always been, I saw a need um, and that something that I could not find that I loved. So I decided to create something that I would love and luckily other people love it as well. <laughs> That's so true about you. And you can see that come through in everything you've done because it has your stamp kind of like your seal of approval on everything. It's like yeah. personalized to you. So mm-hmm. I actually get that. So that's, so your why is still that. That's oh, yeah. exactly the same. It's never changed. Mm-hmm. That's continued no. to be your why. Okay. So even further on that, what is your why in continuing some like, so most people your why is, okay, I need to make X amount of money. I want to be set financially, or I have this goal to say travel when I retire or, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So their, their destination is set, I guess. Mm -hmm. So for someone who has this destination already there, you're there, you could do anything. What is your why that continues? I love helping people. I mean, that's why, you know, my new book just came out called Relationships First. I love it. Everything that I've been involved in has been to help other people. You know what I mean? It's like the flower shop. I'm helping brides on their special day. I'm helping people, you know, bury their loved ones with the flower. You know, I was always helping people to make their day a little bit better or maybe, you know, take a load off their shoulders by helping them. Cookbooks were to help people get healthy in a real world way where they realize they could eat healthy foods that didn't taste like cardboard. You know what I mean? And with the planners, it's, you know, a way to help people get their day organized, make them feel like they have a hold on their day and not their day have a hold on them. So everything, my why is always about how can I impact the most people and help them? And, you know, whenever you do that, the thing in business is whenever you do that, 
the money will come. But the people, when you start, when you literally go, I'm going to open a business, I'm going to get rich. It does not work like that at all. That is, the, you're going to go broke faster than anything you could imagine if you go after it with that mentality. It's about pouring into people, providing a service or a good that's going to help them because you can feel so good about that at the end of the day. Like I can go to bed so happy knowing that I am building a business, I'm building my teams, I'm hiring more staff in such an ethical, wonderful way because I'm helping others. It's not, you know, this dirty, slimy stuff. You know what I mean? Like this get rich quick stuff. You know what? I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) How wild is that? I knew you were going to, I was writing this question down and I thought she's going to say, cause it's to help people a hundred percent. That's what she's going to say because it's, it shows in what you're doing. It shows through that you really have this genuine passion for help. Like you said, with your cookbooks, I really loved listening to you. You were on someone's podcast and I loved listening to you. Exactly. Break that down to say you were really passionate about wanting to do these cookbooks and you'd go in there and it was like you said, I, so me, I don't cook. I mean, I pretend to, but I don't. And so I do find a recipe and I'm like, Oh, I'm so excited to do this recipe. And then all these ingredients and you're like, I know that's like so many ingredients, not only just so many ingredients, but ingredients I've never even heard of before. Right. Yeah. And I grew up in the kitchen my entire life. And I mean, it's, I mean, when I'm Googling what an ingredient is in this weird cookbooks, I'm like, okay, if I'm Googling, I'm not saying I know it all, but like I'm well versed in the kitchen. I love to cook. So like, if there's a thing that I don't understand what it is, it doesn't need to be in the, in the recipe. <laughs> yes. And I actually was, I was like scrolling through some recipes to try to look at what and because I'm like I'm gonna try one of these she's full of it it's gonna be a heart recipe whatever and I was looking at I'm like it's legit like five ingredients it was super easy like yeah I think it was your a cookie it was like a white chocolate chip oh yeah yeah but then I'm like oh now I need the first form protein powder okay put that on the list so that's (laughs) that's on the list that's on the list yeah that's that's amazing so that brought us to your new book yeah. I am so excited about your new book, listeners. Yeah. Okay, so never mind that she already has two published books. So this is her <laughs> third published book. And yeah. it is Relationships First, People, Passion, Profit. So exactly what she just explained, the money will come, yeah. right? I mean, you tell me. You tell me a little bit about it because my copy is not here yet, but I am so excited for They're it. right here. Yeah, I'm yay, super pumped yay, for yay. it. So um, yeah, so the subtitle, The Relationships First, my whole point of this, like, it's all about relationship building because people, they want to bypass that. They want to shortcut, like, building relationships with other people. It's like, but that is, that's what you have to have. And the subtitle of People, Passion, and Profit, it's in that order. People are first. Your passion is going to be there and the profit will come. And so it's, it's, it's realizing that those are almost the three steps of what it's going to take. And people, like I said, they bypass that and they want to get rich quick and all that stuff where it can take years to foster relationships and you know something I talk about in the book is something I've done for years is every single day I text between one and three people that are in my phone that I have saved for no other reason I just want them to know I'm thinking about them because as an entrepreneur it's a habit that I've gotten into where I don't I used to when I first started this years ago I would almost set like a little alarm as a reminder because I just have my head down and I love to work like working is my absolute passion I just love it I felt myself not being able to pour into my relationships and I'm not, this is not a romantic relationship book. It's about yeah. coworkers, building teams, friendships, all of this stuff that you're going to be going through as an entrepreneur or a leader in your business or a manager, whatever, you know, whatever scale you are in your, um, in your career. But it's something that I felt like I had my head down so much that I would look up and be like, oh, well, I missed this person's birthday. I missed this, per-. like things I wasn't you know, it's not that I would like deliberately did it. I just realized like, holy cow, like I would almost go into this like different world, if you will, when I was working where it's like, I don't want to say nobody else mattered. That's not it. It was just that I was so focused on my dreams and my goals. I'm like, I'm, but it's the people that, you know, are the ones that are encouraging me and helping me. And like, I need to foster that. So years ago I started this and every day between one to three people, I send them a text message every day. It could be, you know, just, Hey, thinking of you, like, I don't, it's not for any other reason, but for me just to, you know, actively keep, you know, touch with my friends and colleagues, you know, people that I've worked with before in the past and things like that. And it's just been so nice because I built so many solid relationships on that by using that tool, because it lets me, they, they let me know what's going on in their life off of social. You know what I mean? Cause we only see yeah. bits and pieces on social media. 
but it's just, I've built so much stronger relationships through that. And I realized, wait, I can build these great relationships while still having my head down and working hard. And so it's just something that, you know, people just, they they have to understand that it's never going to be a quick next day deal. It's building these things slowly and slowly in the relationships that I built. I talked about, I built my first job um, when I was 14, I was a waitress and I worked at a golf course and I would waitress and I built so many great relationships waitressing, waiting tables at 14 with my customers that when I started my, when I uh, bought my building to open my brick and mortar business, the flower shop, you know, I was 20 years, I just turned 20 at that time. I had all those people, they were so excited and so happy for me. I already had customers ready to come in and do business with me because the relationships I built, you know, six years earlier, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just realizing that, you know, relationships are the foundation to every single aspect of your life. Absolutely. I 100% know what you mean in all of what you just said, because I am starting this new business. I I am Mm -hmm. going from being this kind of a person to a completely different kind of a person in that aspect. And you do, you put your head down and you kind of just, you're doing the things and you're going through the things. And my friend said it yesterday. She says, she sent me a voice message and she said, well, this is probably the only way we can talk, but I just wanted to check in on you. And I was like, she's right. We haven't talked for a while. And Yeah. Yeah. So I checked back in with her, but that's totally, absolutely right. And that's kind of, I feel like I'm a little lucky in the sense that I see that this way already. Like I've, Mm -hmm. I've grown wiser. I've come through enough of the social media, whatever life to this business now where it is all about building this community. It's Mm -hmm. not about, I say it all the time. It's not about an audience. It's about a community. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's about the people. That's a hundred percent. It can't be about anything else. If I'm sitting here thinking, oh, there's no, not enough people, or I need more people, or we need to do this next, or we need to do this. Well, guess what? There could be one person in there with me. And Mm -hmm. it's like, well, guess what, girl, you get a lot of me because this is happening and we're going to make this, this happen. Yeah. And that's, it's not about, it's not a numbers game, you know, cause I always call, I call, you know, my Instagram followers, I call my supporters because they are, they're the ones liking my posts. They're the ones, you know, sharing my stuff with their friends that are like-minded or, you know, they're the ones that are buying my planners or buying my book or whatever. Cause they truly, they're my supporters. And I built amazing relationships with people I've never even met in person. You know, the people that I know, like, you know, I have several like bulldog moms that I'm friends with, of course it's over bulldogs, but, and I've just, I've just made some fascinating, you know, wonderful relationships with them. And people can't get hung up on that number. Like you're saying, like it might be one person, but here's the thing is, wouldn't you have rather have, it's like that saying, what is it like um, four quarters over a hundred pennies? Like it's about the quality of people there. And yeah. with Instagram, I feel like that's where it's really bad because people get so caught up in that quote follower count yeah. where if you actually run the analytics and the, um, you know, their engagement, you'll see that somebody that has 2000 followers has a massive amount of engagement compared yeah. to someone that has, you know, a hundred thousand that has a little bitty bit piece of engagement because they're just, their followers aren't true, true supporters of them and true followers. They just probably liked them at one time. But if you have, you know, I would rather have a hundred people that were just diehard solid supporters than have, you know, a million that could not really give a crap. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do know what you mean. And that is a point when you were talking about in one of your conversations, your stationary And because you do advocate for handwritten thank yous, you do advocate for that. And, and real quick side note, how, how are you involved in Movio? Is that what it's called? Moveo. It's just, it's just a friend of mine. Just a friend. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I got her bands through you. It was a recommendation through you. She actually wrote the forward in this book. She did. That's amazing. Uh So that's so awesome because I got the cutest, sweetest handwritten note. And I actually took a picture of it and posted it on my page because it was Something that is that extra detail that you can't even imagine what that means to someone getting something like that. It's the, you can tell that they went to that trouble for you. Mm -hmm. They appreciate you. They remember that you are the reason they are in business, you know? Yeah. So that's actually, no, you're fine. Go ahead. Well, so that's what I was. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You go, you go. (laughs) Okay. I'll go. go. So that's, it brings me to, I've always been a huge advocate for handwritten thank you notes, Mm -hmm. handwritten. I mean, making sure you're saying thank you for wedding invitations, wedding, you know, this whole generation of evites, baby Mm -hmm. showers, sending an evite through a baby shower. It's like, no, 
No, no, right. no, no, no. Let's go back to, to etiquette. And when it is an event like this, it is you pay and send these things or you do this yeah. and then you send a thank you note. That's right. That's common courtesy. Yes. Absolutely. And it just seems like it's almost just like a lost art, if you will, because yeah. that's how I look at it. It's like, you know, I've, I'm not one, you know, and when I, if, let's say someone sends me a gift or something, you know, I will usually send them a picture of it and like a text thank you just to acknowledge I received it. Yeah. But then I'll always follow up with a handwritten note too, because what happens is if, you know, if I get the gift and I write the handwritten note the next day, I mail it. So it might be, let's say a week before they get the thank you. But in the meantime, they'll be like, Hey, I had this delivered to your house. It was supposed to be there. Do you know? If so I do that because I got, I used to not, not acknowledge that I received it until they got the thank you note. Cause that would be like a surprise. But then I got so many people asking, like, well, did you get this or did you get that? And so I'm like, Oh yes, I'm acknowledging it. And then moving forward. But back to what you mentioned about Moveo, that's a relationship story right there because, and this is the, the power of social media is because I actually met her through Snapchat. So she had followed me, the owner, Becky, she had followed me on Snapchat for a while. And we had talked about dogs through Snapchat, but that's, I never met her, anything like that. And then, um, she was going to start Moveo. It was four or five years ago. And she reached out to me, like, I think she started the company in like October and she reached out to me like maybe, I don't know, April. And she asked if I would do one-on-one -on -one business coaching. And I was like, no, no, I'm writing my book. Um, I'm writing a cookbook, you know, again, I don't have time for this, you know, reach out to me in June. I'll have it done. Not really thinking that it would be a thing. Sure enough, there she was June 1st. She reached out and she's like, Hey, are you ready for me now? And so I, I tease it. She like bullied me into coach, coaching, but that's actually how I started my whole entire business coaching career was because she kind of like, she asked me and I never thought about it again. And then I started doing business coaching, you know, and she was my first ever client. So it was wild. So I worked with her for a couple of years and now we just, we've become best, best friends and, you know, visit each other. She lives down in Florida and we'll visit each other. We talk every single day and we just be, this relationship has just been built off of social media and just from, you know, showing some kindness and just, you know, being real with each other. That's, that's so amazing. I love stories like that because I actually do have a lot of friends. I, not a lot, but I have friends that are social media friends that like you say, those are the ones from my big following that came over and support me mm -hmm. in this one. And those are the ones, you know, that that's, that's who they are, but, and I've never met them in real life. Yeah. You know, that, I that know. is the beauty about social media. That's a beautiful part of being able to reach so many people Absolutely. around the world. Um, so I, the next thing I want to ask you about is kind of hot topic stuff, but you're the gal for it. And I love it okay. because I am okay. a hot topic gal myself because okay. I'm not very easily bullied. Okay. And I love, love, love your perspective on your women's conferences. Love yeah. Them. <laughs> love them. I yes. love it. So my anti woo woo events. Yes. Your anti woo woo glitter. Isn't going to pay the bills. Yep. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So when you first came out with being that way, you kind of said, Oh, I was kind of ready for the backlash, but you didn't yeah. get it because no. there's enough people out there that want this, that feel yes. the same way. Yeah. Like I was kind of ready for that. Like, you know, people, thinking it was like too hard or like too masculine or something like that. Cause it's just, it's women in business is like not, it's, it's for women wanting to do stuff. They don't care about the, you know, feather pens and glitter and, you know, unicorns and rainbows and all that kind of, it's just, they want to get in there. They want tactical stuff. They want to get it done. And I was tired of seeing all of these events promoted or people almost like where they're pacifying an audience of like the, we, I don't like the, you are enough slogan. I don't like, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Because the thing is, like, you've got to do the work to earn those feelings. You, know, you don't just wake up confident. You have to work to earn that confidence. And that's what I wanted with women in business. Is like, I was just tired of seeing that. I was like, because I would love to go and connect with more women that were like-minded, but I didn't see anything like that. So again, that's how I've operated. It's like, if I don't see something that I like and I want to do something, I'll just create it. And that's, that's what happened. It's been, um, it'll be going on five years now. And we have the conference, we have like 80 women come, we keep it small and intimate and that we can all really get to know each other. The business we've had people um, start businesses together, go, you know, like one will start to consult with another and in, in a large way, they've just become like best friends. And now it's so cool for me to see these women that were, that have come to these events, they're posting together, they're going and visiting each other across the country and hanging out. And like, because it's like, you finally find 
your place. You know what I mean? Like women that are like-minded that have just this, this, I don't want to say like this alpha attitude, but that is what it is. It's like women that are not easily pushed around. You know, everybody gets along. There's no catty BS or drama. And I made it clear if that's ever a thing, you're out. You can never come back again. We will ask you to leave because we're just, we're not about that. It's about truly like lifting each other up and helping each other without all the crap that goes with it. You know, I just, I just couldn't find anything like that. So I just wanted to start my own. <laughs> that's a hundred percent what I'm doing here. That's, that's exactly, awesome. exactly what I'm doing here. It's there's not enough of it. The outpouring, not. I have a wait list for my November event. So there's only 80 people that can come. Yeah. I have 221 people on my wait list right now for that one event. And I can't, yep. even, you know what I mean? And it's just because it's, it's wonderful. And I love that, but it just shows me the community is there. Like the hunger is there. Yeah, absolutely. And I yeah. think it's, it's because people like us that aren't scared of saying, yeah, that's me. Everybody right. doesn't get a participation trophy and it's right. okay. And yeah. so for the next game, try harder for the next yep. moment, push further, you know, exactly. Yep. And, and that's exactly what it's, it's helpful. Look, hard for. work is respected. That's the thing is that people don't want to put the hard work in anymore and they just want the glory. But hard work is what is ultimately rewarded, and enough people aren't willing to put that in. They do it for a week, a month, a year, and they just don't see any return on it. Like, it, I worked for years before I ever got a paycheck. And then, you know, I'm paying, you know, your teams, you know, their whole salaries, and they can't understand that, oh, wait, you don't, you don't get paid? No, yeah. because like, you're constantly reinvesting in your company. You're reinvesting to make it better, to make it a better customer experience, you know? So that's the thing is a lot of young entrepreneurs going in business, they don't understand that there's going to be years that you don't get paid. And guess what? If funds are short, you're the one that's not getting paid. It's not you cutting hours. It's you not taking a check, you know? So it's just putting in that hard, gritty work, and people don't see the dark times. That's what I love about the women in business community, and I'm sure you love that about the community you're building. It's just... It's women that just get it. They do. They just get it. Absolutely. That's, oh my heck, sorry. You'll miss me. Yeah, don't worry. I have these moments where it's just like gone. No, you're good. Um, so I had one gal, she, she reached out to me and she was, and it was funny because her husband's part of the Iron Council. So it was really weird that she reached out to me and said, ask this question, but I loved that she asked it because then I got to answer it and I actually used it as content to answer it cool. out out loud yeah. because the question was hey what are you going to do to make sure or emphasize that we should be getting together in our local areas and I'm like what sh what am I going to do what are you going to do mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's like what you're going to get out of this what you put into it in life you are going to yeah. get out of it what you put into it so as soon as you stop expecting me to hand something to you or for me right. to get it for you, it's, you're going to get it yourself. It's that with kids. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It's like, as soon as you figure out that you can get your own shirt out of the closet, you're going right. to be a better person for it, you know, yeah. type stuff, well, that type attitude. And that's even as running a team, you know, like if they come to you and they're like, Hey, what do you think? Should, should I do, do you want to do this or this? You know what you do in that regard? And this is going to help build your team too and help build their confidence and their decision-making. I say, what do you think I should do? Or what would you do? Because then you're putting the question back on them and they're like, oh, well, I mean, I think if we went with this, it would look really cool because we could brand it as this. I'm like, all right, let's do that then. Because then you're giving them the confidence that one, they can make the decisions on their own. Two, they knew the answer all along. Three, they don't need my constant approval on every little thing. You know, where there's too many balls moving in the air with... My teams that I have for, because I have my women in business team, my EF personal brand team, then I have a paper and plan co team, then I have Andy's, our media company team, and then I have our RTA team. So I've got these four different teams and I can't be everywhere and all the time. So it's like, it's important to empower people. Like what you did is like, you know, well, what are you going to do? It's like, oh wait, you got to put the question back on them because so many times people are used to being like spoon fed the answers to get what they want. But it's, it's so empowering for them. I hate that word empowering because I feel like it is like the woo-woo word. But it's so empowering people to be able to like, you know what? I can feel solid in my decisions and I made a good choice. And, you know, they really accepted. My boss really accepted this or my leader accepted this. So it's, you know, I love that you get that's exact kind of answer. I would do. It's like, well, what are you going to do for this? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's giving them their own. Because so, you, you touched on it. It's they have the answer all along. They yes. know. You know the yep. answer to that. I'm like, I, you literally just answered your own question. Right. But there you go. Absolutely. You do it. Yep. You do it. Yep. Yep. So uh, that kind of 
brings me, I mean, it wasn't perfectly, but when you first had your company, you talk about not one of the habits of that. So all uh, along with, well, it's not along with, I'm going to take it somewhere else maybe. Okay. So I, sorry, I had a way to connect that, but I'm taking it a different way. So okay. I really, really love when you talk about not letting your ego override your business sense. Yeah. Because when you're growing a business, a, a good business owner knows keep overhead low, you know, mm -hmm. don't over buy, don't get too much inventory, don't whatever, whatever, whatever. We had to learn that the hard way. We actually had Same. to live and learn that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, everybody does from living it is a lot better than someone telling you because yeah. you really understand it. Yeah. So what is your advice for other people? What are some other examples of that other than just obviously keeping your overhead low, keeping yeah. your inventory low or find out better ways to not have to have inventory, maybe sell as it or gets ordered yeah. or, you know, anything like that. What are some other uh, tips you have for not letting your ego get in the way? Yeah. Well, it's really about cash flow management. It's the reality of the situation of what it is. So when I first started my business, I was 20 years old. So my dad was a successful entrepreneur my entire life. I somehow had it in my brain that this was like some like genetic thing that was passed down. Like I would just inherently know all this stuff about entrepreneurship. And I was 20 years old, bought my business, started my flower shop. And I wanted to, again, like I mentioned um, earlier on the podcast, I wanted the things that were not available. You know, like, I'm not kidding you when I say my town was small. You could literally not even buy a pair of socks in our town. Like, there was nothing. And I was like, well, I want handmade baskets by the people in the Ozarks, which was in Missouri. It's like everything was local. I wanted, you know, handmade soaps that people could slice off and select it and package it. And I wanted, like, all these handmade things and, like, high-end. I sold, like, fancy bottles of laundry detergent, you know, for, like, $20 a bottle, which that's more of a decorative thing. You're not buying it to use. I had all these beautiful things. But I was, you know, I knew nothing about business, absolutely nothing. Because again, I think like, oh, my dad was this, I should be this then too. And I got myself in a massive pickle because I had six full-time employees. I had all this inventory. I only had, um, I had one business credit card I've kept a little limit on. So I didn't get in like crazy credit card debt or anything like that. But it got to be where I didn't understand cash flow management invoicing terms, nothing. I mean, I'm 20 years old. I let my ego think, get the best of me. Like, oh, well, all my friends are doing this. Well, I'm, I'm owning a business, you know, I'm, I'm better, you know, and all this stuff, even though I was not at all. I was like, literally like, what am I doing? What happened was, is then I realized, oh, you know what? When I get all, when I buy all this stuff, I actually have to pay for it. You know what I mean? Like literally that sounds so stupid to me now. I'm like, how did I not even realize that? I knew I would have to pay for it at some point, but I was like, I wasn't cash flow managing it where it was, I'm going to order this because this invoice is going to be due in 30 days. Let me write that down. I was buying a ton of shit in the same week, not thinking that all of it was going to be due in 30 days. And here I get invoices, you know, I need, you know, $55,000. And I'm like, I don't have that. And I ended up, you know, I, I had one of my employees come to me on payday and she pulled me aside. She was so sweet. She's like, Emily, I just went to the bank and the bank won't cash my paycheck. And I was like, what? She goes, yeah, you don't have, they say you don't have any, any funds in there. And I originally, you know how when you like know something's wrong, you get like a real hot feeling, like you're like your blood's boiling inside. And you're like embarrassed. You're scared. You know what's happening. That's the feeling I got. And I, my ego got the best of me. And I did not want them to see that maybe I was at fault here because I was 20 years old. All my employees were at least 30 to 40 years old. And I'm like, I didn't want them to think they're working for some young, dumb kid. And so the only reason she knew the bank told her that is because my business account was happened to be at the same bank that she also banked at. So they could immediately see my account and hers. So I took her check. I go, let me go to the bank and figure this out. They messed something up. And I, mean, I was sticking to my guns on this. Like they messed this up, blah, blah, blah. And also I was not balancing my checkbook either every month because money was coming in. I thought it was good. And this is before online banking or anything like that. I'm 40 years old now. So this is 20 years ago. Online banking wasn't a thing. There wasn't apps, smartphones, nothing like that. You had to wait for the monthly statement every month and check it. And I was like, that was something where I knew I had to do it because I did it. I handled my own personal finances very well. And I was like, oh, it's all right. The money's still coming in. We're good. I'll just balance those when I get time. But I'd never had time and I kept putting it off. And uh, so then I go to the bank and it turns out that I did not have any money in there. And I was very far off in my, on, on my, uh, my accounting that I had on my computer versus you know what the bank showed. So I only had $42.86 in my entire bank account. I had six payroll checks out. I had vendor checks out and I was freaking out. 
So I didn't, again, my ego was so huge. I did, I had to save face and I couldn't own up to my mistake. So I drove to my house, pulled money out of my savings account, went back. I got cash for my employees. I'm like, Hey, the bank messed, still blaming the bank. I'm like the bank messed up on this. You guys are just going to, I'm just going to have to pay you cash for like the next week or two until they can get this figured out. Meanwhile, I'm like, what the hell can I do to like get money fast? And I got hyper resourceful, which I go into all, all the sh- all the crap that I did. The biggest thing was I cut 14 inches off my hair for locks of love in order to get free advertisement on the front page of our local newspaper that was distributed to six different counties that I also delivered flowers to. So therefore, it was advertisement for my company. But I mean, I did anything because my hair was like down to my butt almost that time. And I cut it all off, had my picture in the paper holding this long braid and it got me business. And it, it ended up, you know, I went from $42.86 to you know, high six figures within about 10 months because I, I just hustled. I mean, I did all kinds of stuff to try to get funds back. So my biggest thing is make sure that that was a long story around this, but I wanted to like, let your listeners know, like I've been there. I understand how scary and bad it can be. And you have to understand your cash flow on that and live below your means. You know, we save, not, we try, we, we work right now. Like the way we've worked is we've always saved like 90% of our paycheck. It used to be 10%. But then the business grow, you adjust your living and things like that. The biggest mistake I see a lot of entrepreneurs make is they start making money and they level up their lifestyle. They make a little more money. They level up their lifestyle and they're not saving anything where you should, you should get to a point where you can, you're saving exponentially more than you were actually spending because I actually, I saw some, um, it was a reel the other day of this woman breaking down this woman's, um, finances. She was an accountant and she was saying she made like 3.7 million a year, her and her husband together. And she was going through her expenses and her expenses were just absolutely unnecessary. And, uh, and their entire savings collectively, what they had saved was $30,000. You're making almost $4 million a year over years, and that's all you have saved. You know what I mean? Where And they were living, they were spending about $85,000 a month on expenses. Their house, their cars, dinner out all the time, nannies for each of their kids, you know, coffee, their private gym memberships, their personal training. They're living this like big life, but they, don't, they only have two weeks worth of savings saved if something happens. And I think, you know, the way we handle our personal finances is also indicative to our business finances as well. So it's the cash flow management. It's hiring a CPA or bookkeeper right out of the gate. People always think that's going to be something as they grow. Hiring a bookkeeper is not expensive. I mean, you can get one for usually $150 a month, you know, starting out. Or it depends on, you know, how much you have to deal with. But I remember that's what mine charged me when I started out with a bookkeeper. They balance your books for you. They will help take care of taxes. They'll help, you know, they will help you so much and to keep you on track and don't ignore your finances. We all know that friend that doesn't want to check their bank account because they're afraid what it's going to say. Well, that number's not going to change. And if you are not happy with what you see in the bank, use that as motivation, not something that gets you down and be like, I don't want to see that. I want to see an extra zero. So I use the banking as like a contest almost. You know what I mean? Like I want to see how like, okay, when I get to this, I'm going to buy this for all my employees or, you know, or whatever. It's just, it's a, it's like a little reward system. Well, that's, I actually just did a post on that because my book of the month for my members is the Atomic Habits. So good. He's so good. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know. I'm so new to all of this. It's so funny because a tiny little segue into that. Yeah. But so I was, I've always had a job, you know, and then my husband didn't want me to have that job anymore. And so he had invested in, uh, you know, a vacation rental. And so he's like, mm-hmm. Hey, we can do this. And then you can have a job with our babies, with our kids. You yeah. can, you can manage a full time, never up, ending job. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. We ended up yeah. having seven that I managed and cleaned with our little boys. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was a full time job. But anyway, so I never had to worry about the business owner side of it. I, I yeah. would just, you know, whatever he handled that side of it. Yeah. So for me, he would be like, read this business book, read this business book. And I was just mm-hmm. like, I'm not interested. I'm not whatever, whatever. And then I'm starting now, of course, because I'm doing all yeah. this and I'm reading all these books and I'm just soaking up all of this information that I'm like, how could I not have been doing this all along? How, yeah. why was I so okay with becoming stagnant? Like yeah. I'm smart enough. Are you though? Yeah. No, like you're never smart enough. Like right. there's always room to get smarter. There's always room to eat better. There's always room to be nicer. There's all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why, why, 
why are so many women just okay? I guess people, people. Why, why are yeah, they just people, okay yeah. being stagnant? I think what a lot of that is, is that I've had this conversation multiple times with people. It's they are, if it's, if they stop learning and stop educating themselves and they stop pursuing higher success levels, once they have eclipsed their friend group, if they are the most successful in their friend group, if they are the smartest in their friend group, they feel like that is okay. I am the smartest one when we go to dinner. I am the most successful one. And it may be by you're only making $10,000 more a year than your friends are, but you are then deemed the most successful one. So it's getting out of that. Like, don't you, what about getting out of your friend group, getting out of your town? Like, why would you want to be the best in your city when you could be the best in the world and then the best in history? So there's something, you know, it, it's con that constant pursuing of your full potential to grow and to be better. And I feel like, you know, once the whole personal development, you know, self-development, whatever you want to call it, that's, it's almost like a black hole, like a rabbit hole. Like once you start, you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. I didn't know this, blah, blah. And then you're like, I want more. I want more. And it becomes like this addiction. Like I want to learn, I want to grow and I want to be more. Now with that, I mean, it's obviously wonderful, but it's important too that you don't, my husband always calls them a success zombie. And that's what it is. They'll read all the books, they'll listen to all the podcasts, but they don't actually implement, you know? So there's the thing is like, there's that the knowing and then the actual applying, you know, they say, what is it like a knowledge is power? That's not actually true. It's applied knowledge is power. So it's, it's finding, okay, I need to apply this. So people sometimes only want to, if you were a roofer, you only want to read books about roofing business. That's not right. You need to read books about everything and you find how it applies to your business to make your business better. Cause here's the thing. If you're in a roofing company, you want to say, I want to put the best roof on probably everybody in your industry is reading how to put the best roof on. What can you learn from someone else that you could add that extra personal touch where, you know what, a roof is a roof. As long as it doesn't leak, it's a pretty damn good job, right? But what else can you do? Is it you put in, setting up a follow-up little gift or is it a thank you card? What are the extras you can do that your competitors are not? And that's the stuff you learn by reading outside of your own realm. So the personal development, and I didn't get into that a lot either until probably 15 years ago, I guess. And then it's just like, it does. It's like a whole new world. You're like, man. And then now it's like, this is so funny and it's not it's not a dig on anything, but now I look back and I'm like, man, I was dumb. Cause you, just, like, you don't know what you don't know. And that's the thing is that's where we need to humble our egos is like, I didn't know X, Y, Z, or I didn't know this, or I didn't know that. And there's still stuff I don't know. And that's like the, one of the fun parts I think that about entrepreneurship, it's like, there's always a challenge. There's always something to figure out, something to learn, something to navigate around. And it's just like, I think it's, I always tease it. Like entrepreneurships are just psychopaths basically, because like, why do we do this to ourselves? Because it's like, you're working way more hours and you are the one, you, you take the grunt of everything and you're constantly learning. You're constantly solving problems, putting fires out. But for some reason, it's like the sick joy you get when you do it. <laughs> it's true. Oh my heck. It's yeah. so true. I've watched yeah. my husband do all of the sick things and I'm like, you're yeah. crazy. You're crazy. I know. It's wild. Uh, so the, yeah, I love the inf information's nothing without implementation. That right. was something Absolutely. I took away from a, from a thing the other weekend, but so yeah. back, so that's, sorry, I took off on that tangent because mm. I, it, it really is. It's like th things are blowing my mind. Like, and, yeah. and, that's good and though. I just want everyone to do it with me. And so yes. I, I'm, I'm in a good place right now because it's, I see where these women that I'm trying to drag along, you know, I'm like, come yeah. on, come yeah. on. I, I, I know what they're feeling. I know what's in their brain because I was just there recently, you know, recently mm -hmm. enough, but now I'm starting to be over here and I'm like, I promise it's going to be so good over here. Come on. Let me, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, how yeah. can I, how else can I persuade you and prove it to you? I'm just going to have to show you, but uh, let me prove it to you. But so what I was, I was talking about before that was the budgeting. This mm -hmm. was, we did have to implement a full, it's a lifestyle. Everything yeah. with habits uh, is a lifestyle. It's not necessarily saying, you can't have coffee or it's not saying like things that are really jolting to you, but it's saying these little teeny things that you're going to implement maybe won't affect you next week or next month or even in a year. But if you look at your trajectory, it's going to make your paths completely go opposite directions just from yeah. implementing little things like budget and mm -hmm. like, watching your money and balancing your checkbook. And yeah. what do you, I think you say, you, I've heard you say the quote that you love is the, 
Watch your pennies. Oh, my dad's the, quote. Yeah. Yeah. Your dad's quote. Yeah. 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 Watch what your is pennies that? and your dollars take care of yourself themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. That's what we always said. Cause when we were kids, we'd go, what do you want to like, you know, the gumball machine and get the fake tattoos or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he would always tell us, no, and we're like, dad, it's just a quarter. It's just a dime. It's just a nickel, whatever it was. And he's like, he goes, well, you know what? He's like, he goes, yeah, but what happens after you put the tattoo on? We're like, well, it'll wash off in like two days. He goes, then what do you have? And it was these lessons that, because, you know, that my parents were very, very good about, you know, teaching us the, the, the lessons of finances and, you know, patience and everything like that. And it's, it's true. It's like, because if you're willing to spend quarters here and there and there, then you know what? If you didn't spend those, you'd have a dollar if you avoided that four times. So it got, it, it, it put, it put that mindset up as like to ask before every purchase. I still do this. Do I really want this? You know? And it's just, it's just one of those, I still do it to this day. Like, it's so funny because I take, I don't know, maybe I'm just a weirdo, but I take my, my income from all of my companies and I add it up and then I divide it by how much I work, a guesstimate of how much I work. I'm like, okay, I make this much an hour. And then if I want to go buy something, like, do I want to work? I worked three hours to buy this. Is that worth And it's like this craziest thing. I still do it. I've always done it my entire life since I was like a kid. I'm like, D- is this worth it? I'm like, no, that was a lot of work. That's not worth it. And then I don't buy it. And I think that's why, like, I'm just, I've always been like a saver because of that. I think you're, you're watching me like die over you saying that because you're not weird. If you're weird, then you and my husband are weird because (laughs) when we got into this, when we got into this whole, you know, we've got to watch our money and this is what we're doing, whatever. He started saying, you need to ask yourself when you're about to buy that shirt, is Mm -hmm. this worth my husband being away from our family? being away from me, being away from our kids for that amount of time. So if it was $40, is that worth him being away for X amount of hours? You know, like, was that shirt worth his time? And he relates it to time because right. No, that's what we don't have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't have unlimited amount of time. So exactly. But we do, we, you know, you have to think about things like that. I love that. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just something that I don't know. It just, it, it does make you stop and think because I think as an entrepreneur, like, And I I feel like that has also benefited me in the long term because as entrepreneurs, depending on what your business is, you can have large influxes of money come in. And then maybe if you work seasonal or something, let's say you're in, you know, groundskeeping or something where spring, summer, fall, you're killing it. You know, money's coming in. Then winter, you know, it's kind of dead. You're not doing anything. You have to think about those slow times. And that was a lesson I learned in my flower shop is because, you know, I would have these huge months of like, prom, Mother's Day, Easter, like all this, you know, income coming in and wedding seasons and things. And then wintertime after Christmas, it's pretty dead until Valentine's Day. So there wouldn't be a whole lot of money. And I, I learned that my second year in business because it took the first year for me to realize like, oh crap, this stuff's seasonal. Like I can't rely on these, this income all the time. And so then I kind of, that was a really like strong, you know, flip of the switch for me to realize like, okay, now, now I need to really hunker down and figure out like, what do I actually need to have? How much money do I need saved in the company for this? And it's understanding the market. Cause I did not understand the market at all. And so it was definitely a learning curve for me. And the yeah, thing is too, it's like, you know, it's just, it's taking control of your money and understanding how it works. Like we, if you avoid it, it's not going to get better. You know, that's, that's the thing I think that we all try to do. It's like, oh no, I don't want to see that. I'll just put my head under the head under the pillow and hope it goes away. That's not how it happens. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. Okay. I have a question for you and it's my, yeah. maybe weird. I hope it's not, but what would oh, you man. go back and teach young Emily? Mm. That people's opinions do not count. So that's, I was like the little, like chubby little nerd. And I always cared, like I wanted to be popular and I cared about what people thought and everything like that. And now it's so funny because I feel like, you know, in the last 10, 12 years, I just have this weird, like, I just don't really care. You know what I mean? Like I'm living my best life. And I say that, I'm not saying like, that's like the phrase I'm saying, like, I'm living my life in the best way that I know how in the best terms, trying to help people, you know, be being the best person I feel like I can be. So if someone's not going to, you know, see that, or they, you know, they want to try to like, you know, kick me or, you know, get me down or something. It's like, that doesn't matter. Like I'm doing everything I can. So it's just realizing that, you know, all the stuff that happens to you and your in early on in life and your past, it doesn't matter now. It matters who you are today, who you're working to be tomorrow. You know, they always say like, oh, you can't, the two like least important days are yesterday and tomorrow because you just got today. It is true. I mean, it's about living like how you want to and what you want to be. And, 
you know, making these promises to yourself to improve. So I think that would be it. I mean, I know that sounds like kind of silly maybe, but it really is realizing that like little opinions and comments online and all that kind of stuff doesn't bother you. And I think it is since I've gotten more, since social media has been, you know, so much more popular and it's, like it's everywhere now. And also with me selling online, because when I had my flower shop, I wasn't online. You know, it, it, the internet hardly existed. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but it's realizing that, you know what, the people that might, you know, say, oh, your planner's too expensive or you're this or that, you know, because I do have, it's one, of, it's, it's a premium product. You know, my planners, I didn't make them to be sold in Target. You know, it is like, it's a luxury item. And I understand that 1000%. But if someone comes to me and says, oh, your planner's, you know, too expensive, that's fine. I can live with that. I couldn't live with them saying, your, your planner's a piece of crap and it's, it's, a, it's cheaply made. I couldn't live with that. You know what I mean? But the thing is, the people that usually, like, hate, I guess you would I hate the word, like, haters. The people that will cause, like, those kind of comments or cause any hate, they weren't going to buy your stuff anyway. They're not supporters of yours. They're just looking to try to rattle you up. That's all it is. So it's really just, you know... Keeping, putting blinders on, staying focused to your mission, to your team, to who you are and just pushing forward and just letting all the other stuff fall to the wayside. Cause it, it does not, it really doesn't mean anything. It's like you, you're going to make a mountain out of a molehill over that. And it's coming from what source? I mean, that's the thing. It, it's a, pers- you know, it's like- an opinion, right? <laughs> it's an opinion and everybody's entitled to them. But the thing is that I always think of this and you know, it's, it's something where if someone, you know, I don't really have it happen, but rare super rare now but if people like you know write something like bad or hateful or negative on an instagram post or something i'm just like i just you know okay that's all i'll just say okay because i have a rule i say don't feed the trolls i'm like okay and then they usually are like okay what do you mean okay i was like okay and they're just like they're mad because you're not like engaging with them or i just ignore it but what i think of is think about this person's life it's really sad that they're literally probably sitting on their couch and they have nothing else to do except go through people's Instagram and writing negative things. Like, where is their mindset? Where is their life at? And I just don't even mess with it because I'm like, it, in a weird way, I'm like, I just, I feel sorry for them. Like, this is, this is what your life is. This is what you do. Like, you should be so busy doing things and growing and providing for the people around you that you don't have time to do that stuff. When you get into these mindsets of betterment and growth and those things you you it takes you to such a different level of the people that you're around you're almost like hyper aware you're hyper aware yes. of who's around you you're hyper aware of what you're doing and why you're not doing it better and and those kinds of things it's my favorite thing to say block I like I hate that people even talk about it like oh I just had a troll yeah. it's like oh my gosh the fact that you're even talking about it is worse than the troll just block it yeah. and move on like Right. It's fine. It's no big deal. Don't don't give them any shine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have so in mine, revitalized womanhood. I have separated my system into four life categories. I call them core categories, and so they're obviously like what everything. With some people have pillars, some people have the five yeah. F's, some people you know whatever, whatever, whatever helps me keep it simple for my women to help them grow. So mine are beliefs, bonds, body, and biz. So Uh if you think about that, what is your most, one of your most favorite six success habits, successful habits in each of those areas of your life? So obviously beliefs is like your religion, your spiritual, your wellness. I think that would be one of my core values is respect the potential and significance of every person. So that would be one of my beliefs. That's awesome. (laughs) I, I'm it's also gonna have chapter to... four in my book. Oh, yeah, good. Then I don't have to write it down because my book's coming. Okay, good. Yeah. Every, okay. Chapter, every chapter is one of my core values and why it is. <gasps> Yay. I'm glad I yeah. asked that then. Yeah. Well, then what's what's bonds so the, for the people that you surround yourself with? It would be uh, relationships first. Does that count for one or is that there you too go. easy? Or show no, appreciation and gratitude? That's, that's perfect because a successful habit is putting putting people first. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's you, one of my core values is relationship first. It's honestly why marketers have figured out that influencers are so important because they've mm-hmm. developed these people who listen to everything they say and they're going right. to buy whatever they say rather than just putting it on the TV commercials and it's coming from... Well, no, no because people buy from nobody. friends. Yeah, And even though maybe friends. it's on social media and you've never actually met them, they are your social media friend. Exactly. So, you know, industries have gotten away from that. And that's why, yeah, it's, it's one, it actually is like more cost effective to 
put it, channel it right into social media because they're reaching the exact audience they want to reach. It's not putting it on the news or, you know, on whatever channel and then hoping your demographic happens to be watching. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So body's a good one for you. I know you're, you're, you're working it pretty hard yeah. and you're good about <laughs> eating well. So what's your most favorite successful habit for body? Mm, I would have to say, I mean, I don't know. I don't have a core value for that, but I would say something with just, you know, movement daily because when you, you know, that's the most, we all know that exercise is the most underutilized and underused quote prescription for depression, anxiety, all of this. And if you're moving every day, you're releasing that dopamine, those endorphins, and you're, you know, in your move, one, it's great and beneficial for you, but two, you're going to be a higher performer at every single level in every aspect of your four that you have because you feel good about yourself and what you're doing. So I would say just like the daily movement. Does that count? That's an amazing one. I okay. <laughs> legitimately didn't go to the gym today specifically because like I said, my mom is in town. And so mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym and miss out and let's just go for a walk. So we took the baby for a walk. Yeah. And I, I don't think about that as my gym time, but we were walking. I was sweating. It was, yeah. we were going up a hill. I'm pushing a hundred pounds in a stroller. It's, yeah. you know, it was a good workout. So even if you're That's just awesome. thinking to yourself, oh, I didn't do abs or, oh, I didn't do whatever. It's like, yeah. go for a walk. It's just, mo- right. It's just and, movement. Yeah. And don't ever think your day is too busy. So it's funny because, you know, I go for a walk every single day and it depends on where, where I walk depends on what I'm doing. So if I have to do edits, you know, let's say when I was writing this book or if I'm doing edits for another project we have, or if I have a lot of phone calls to make, or I'm trying to read, I will literally just go out in my driveway and I walk back and forth up and down my driveway for an hour. I mean, it's, I don't know how many laps I make, but it's a lot, but I'll just go, I'll just go back and forth and I will have a clipboard and I'll be editing with my red pen, flipping the page. And I just walk and I will do my work while I'm doing that. Or if I'm catching up on DMS, I'll be going through and sending people audio messages to get through as many DMS in an hour that I can to touch base with all my supporters and stuff. So like, or if I have a lot of computer work, I pull my exercise bike out into the driveway I put my laptop on the handles and I will work while I'm riding the bike just to be, to be efficient and to get my stuff done. So it's like, you know, there's never, there's never an excuse. That's so smart. I'm, I'm actually (laughs) working on fitness with some of the girls in there. And I'm like, honestly, I will show you a couple different movements you can do. It's not that big of a deal. You have no excuse. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. Now that yeah. <laughs> so this one's going to be hard for you because you are such a big entrepreneurial brain that that's okay. what your brain is constantly thinking about. What is your favorite successful habit for business? Making it my best work. Everything oh, has to be my best work. One. Yeah, it's it's simple, but it's you know it's the thing that like I always want whatever I touch to be people can understand that this is going to be a premium product. It's going to be the best. It's my best work. It's, you know, and that's, it's the same thing. Like I work with a couple companies, very few, um, for like influencer stuff still. Cause I just, I genuinely just absolutely love the product. We use it. One of the companies that I talk about a lot, um, is cozy earth. And we actually, my husband, we actually reached out to them to see if we could invest or buy their company because we loved it so much. And, uh, they weren't, they weren't ready for any of that yet. But, um, so they did, they declined us, but I love it so much. But the thing is, is that I hear people they'll DM me or I see them out in public. They're like, I got that stuff. That stuff is like so good because here's the thing is that this is just kind of a overarching message or maybe a little nugget for people too. It's like, don't put anything out there that you would not want or be happy to stand behind because whenever I promote anything, I've never in my life gotten something and promoted it like I acted like I use it. Like, you know what I mean? It's something you, I want people to know that if I ever share something or recommend a product, I use it and I absolutely love it because I, you know, your reputation takes years to build and just one little second to wipe it all away. So whatever you do, and that's why I make it the best work. That's one of my core values because I want, whether it's my product, something that we have for our media company, something with me doing influencer work, something just oops, sorry, around our house. I want it to be the best work always because that's my reputation. That's like my stamp of approval on things. That's exactly you because that's what your why is. Your why yeah, is because there wasn't something yeah. out there that you wanted, so you created right. it and you wanted it a certain way, so you created yes. it that way. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. So it's, that's perfect. So it's it's just, you know, whenever you're doing something, it's better to take a little bit longer to for product development 
if that's necessary, instead of you just like, well, I just want to make some money. Let's just put it out. I don't care if it's like cheaper or it's not the exact quality I want. You only have one chance to make a first impression. And I am not willing to negotiate that at all. That's amazing. So. That's pretty deep. And I loved it. Loved it all. <laughs> Soaked it in. Okay. So what has been your biggest challenge in life business? Oh man. I feel like they kind of, did they go hand in hand? I feel like a lot of it. I mean, I learned a lot. My flower shop were some great years, but some rough years. I learned a lot about me, who I am. Um, you know, my work ethic. I'm, I'm an absolute like workhorse. Like I abs- like I could literally just hole up in my office all day and just work. Like I don't need to eat. I don't need to sleep. I'm just love it. But, um, you know, it's, it's not, I've had relationships in the past that were not very supportive of that. Um, because of that and, um, because of my work ethic and everything and I've gotten better. Um, but I do think that, um, in business, my biggest lesson was just dropping my ego, realizing I don't know everything and it's really asking for help. It's following people that are further along in their journey than you are. It's, you know, staying surrounded by people that are also on a journey that you can actually have friends to talk to. Because a lot of times, you know, entrepreneurship can be a lonely road because you, a lot of people, unless they're also entrepreneurs, they don't understand your struggles or your, your journey or what's good. They don't understand that you can't, you've got to cancel dinner because you had an urgent matter at work that you have to address. You know, there's a lot of unknowns that, you know, in entrepreneurship. So I think it's building a really solid group of people like, you know, you're building your, with your women's community and my, my girls that I have in women in business, it's knowing that we can all be an open book with each other and say, oh my gosh, I'm dealing with this, this X, Y, Z. And you're looking for either feedback or maybe you want to vent to them or whatever it is. It's very important that you have people that are on your side because, and, and have your best interest at heart because I, there is also all, you know, these competitive streaks with people where you might say, Hey, here's a product and B product. I don't know what to do. This one's more expensive. This one's cheaper, but not as great. Well, you could be someone that's a snake in the grass and be like, oh no, go with the cheaper one. That's not as great. Just get it out there. And you'll be like, okay, I am. But they're not having your best interest at heart because they would, you know, a best interest friend would be like, wait, wait until you can feel fully confident in your product. You have it exactly how you want. So you can feel proud when you launch it and just get it out there. And that's, that's what a real friend is. Um, But as far as my actually like life stuff, was it the hardest, the hardest lesson I learned or was it the hardest thing? The biggest challenge, whatever, do whatever you want, whatever you want to say, Emily, whatever you want to say. Um, I think the biggest challenge I think I ever faced was probably about three years ago, I think. Um, just because I was trying to get, you know, paper and plan was in development for about a year before it actually launched, um, running several other companies, you know, my cookbook and everything. Um, and I had, my niece, it was her third birthday and I was watching her and my sister and her other kids came over. And then I was watching my niece, my two nieces that my sister was at work. So I have two sisters and one of them was here with me and my three-year-old niece, we were done swimming and she wandered back into the pool whenever we were cleaning up and everything. And she almost drowned there. Um, she was underwater for maybe, I think it was like 40 seconds or something, but I pulled her out, gave her, gave her CPR, went to the ER, um, they had to airlift her to a children's hospital. She was on life support and ECMO machine for like 17 days. It was just the hardest thing I've ever had to go through because I'm trying to be supportive of my sister. I feel guilt, you know, and it's like, cause my older sister was there and my, her kids were there and they saw this and it was just like a, just a total tragic situation. So I'm beating myself up over that, trying to run these businesses and put on a face. Cause I never posted about it on social media. I keep things very private in my life. Um, so I couldn't tell anybody what I was actually going through at the moment. And I've started talking about it a little bit more recently in the last year or so, but it was trying to balance my work life, me and dealing with all this grief and struggle and strain that I was dealing with, seeing my niece go through this and me being at the hospital so much, trying to be there for my sister and seeing, you know, the anguish that was causing her. And it's just, it, and you know, I don't think I've ever as heavily leaned on God as I did during that time. Because I was like, I just need some direction because I had made a promise to myself of like, if she, I'm going to get to it. If she doesn't make it, I don't want to be here either. You know what I mean? But it was still trying to stay strong for my team and not tell them what was all happening. You know what I mean? And they, they knew a little bit, but they didn't know exactly how bad it was. So I think it was me just really starting to realize like, and this is where fitness actually came in because I just, I wasn't working on or anything like that. My, you know, at that moment, cause I was so 
tied up with all the happenings that was ha- going on. And one day I just woke up. I'm like, I've got to do 75 hard. It's the only, and it's my husband's program. Like that's the only thing that's going to snap me out of this. Cause I know I'm going to, I've got to get my mind right again to get out of this dark place that I was at. And again, it was really hard because again, I was hiding this all from people and people didn't know why I wasn't posting on social media. And they're sending me all these messages wondering like, why aren't you putting content out or blah, blah. And I'm like, I can't, I don't want to tell them because it's nobody's business, but my own and my family's. So I think that was something of trying to try navigate that. But again, it's like, I think that through a lot of prayer, working out, getting my food right again, it really did help me. And I mean, now she's, you know, she's just turned six. She's, you know, made it, she is zero brain damage. She's a, she's a, in the gifted programs at school because she's so smart. So it's just one of those things where it's like, I've just, it's just, it's, she's like a miracle child for sure. But I think that's probably like the hardest thing in business is like, no matter how hard it is, you can get through it. It's just trying to go with like what you had, like your four core beliefs or what did you call them? Your, they're, they're my core categories, your core categories, like filing those under core categories. And like, no matter what happens, I've got to do these. And I think that's what honestly like got me out of that really hard spot. You have no idea how that hits home. Like, wowza. I, that's, that's, thank you for that share. That was a great share because I do know <laughs> that you do not share a lot of yeah, your personal stuff. So I no. really appreciate that. And I can't no, imagine going through that. I have yeah. three kids and I was an emergency dispatcher for six years. So I have oh my gosh. as many scary stories as you can possibly think. For and sure. so, yeah, they, they, they go through my head quite a bit. So that's yeah. definitely... Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you get it. on that note, yeah. Who? Yeah, I totally get it. On that note, but no, yeah. yeah, you just I I have people in my brain that while you were explaining that, I really really hope this just touches at the right time in the right way because really hit home. So, yeah. I appreciate that. No, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't Emily. get teary-eyed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm I know. so I just, glad I hate, she's I hate amazing. to be share depressing information, but that's it's, it's not depressing. It's amazing. It's a miracle. It's the, you just said it yourself. Oh, it's a miracle. You. She's a miracle. And I'm so glad yeah. and happy that she's healthy thank and thriving. You. And the, I mean, it's, it's a, not a, so it's a silver lining, but anything in life, it's any challenges yeah. is if you and can learn yeah. and grow a, so a, you're going to learn and grow from it, just like mm-hmm. your business, just like, you know, the things that were hard, you're going to learn and grow from it. But B, you, your story is going to affect, just like I just said, I really hope that resonates with the people in my brain that I'm thinking about right mm-hmm. now, because your story and you being able to share that is going to help someone else get past something that they're dealing with right now. Yeah. And it's something that I keep in mind with my parents always told us too, and this always this was ringing in my mind while all this was going on with my niece is like, there's never anything so bad that you cannot find a way out of it. And that's, you know, and that's something that they've instilled in us since we were little kids. And it just, it's true. So every time I think about that, you know, there's a lot of people right now, especially with the way the world is with the economy and jobs and everything else. It's like, there's a lot of depression, you know, depression, and anxiety is at an all time high right now. So it's, you know, just, you know, it's remembering that nothing is ever so bad that you cannot find a way out of it. And it's, it's finding a way to be just a little bit better every day. And, you know, if you, if you have to step away for a little bit from your business for a, you know, a little bit to fully acknowledge and be aware of what's happening and figuring out what do I need to do to get myself back to my best self from, for me, especially, cause that's not a selfish thing to get back to being me. And then that way I can be better for my spouse, for my team. That's okay. You know, it's, it's one of these things where. And that is also like, as much as I love to work, I completely acknowledge that fact because there's days where I play on a dungeon day once a week where I don't do anything. I mean, I work in my business, obviously, but I don't take any calls, no, you know, Zooms, no nothing. All I do is just work in my business and I work. And if I don't have actually like quote work that's like pending or like I have to get done, I think of processes and systems and what can I do to plug any holes in my boat and things like that. So, you know, don't get so deep into your business that you can't look at it from the outside and find out where are the holes, what, where am I failing as a leader? Where could I be better as a leader? And it's, again, that all boils back into the relationship aspect of it because, you know, I always tease it. Like sometimes your business becomes like a significant other to you. 
And what I mean by that is like, if you're dating, we've all dated some like loser that all our friends were like, he's an asshole. He's blah, blah, break up with him. He's trash. You deserve better. And you're like, oh no, he's great. I love him. Whatever. And then you break up and you see it from the outside. You're like, what was I thinking? That guy is such a loser. My friends were right. I should have listened. And sometimes we get so involved in our business in the romantic side of like, oh, it's my business. I love this. That we don't see it from the outside to say, wait a second, this is okay, but what can I do better? Like, oh my gosh, why are we actually doing it this way? So take a step back. I do it once a week. And then once a quarter, I plan like three days like that. And I just dive in deep and just do any sort of like patching of the boat, I call it. So if you need to like fix anything, it's super important to do that and to care for your business like you would care for your lawn or your swimming pool or your house or whatever. Your, your business requires that type of attention too and not just the day-to-day transactions. That's good advice for the details because you're going around. I think moms do this all the time. I think women do this all the time. Business owners that are like me getting started in all this and I've got all these systems I'm trying to learn. It's going Mm -hmm. through and just like putting out teeny fires. My husband likes to say that you're going around digging. You're not, you're trying to dig a pool, but instead you just dug 40 holes. Yeah. You know, it's like you're not doing anything well. You're doing a whole bunch of things, but none of them are getting done well. So yeah. put the focus on getting things done well. Folding and the whole pile of laundry. Don't let it pile yes. up. Clean the whole kitchen. Don't just do the one, the dishes in the sink. Do the, right. finish the job. Yes. The best way to do that is what I find being busy, um, just in businesses and stuff, is I do like every room. So we have someone here that helps us, you know, take care of the house. But if it's like things, I'll sit there, I'm like in the kitchen, I'm like, okay, do the kitchen. And I don't say put this away or do this or run this upstairs. All I do is like, I do take care of every single thing in that kitchen. That's the dishes. If there's files I need to file or if I set my work bag down or whatever. And then if there's stuff that needs to go upstairs, I put it on the stairs and I wait till it's time to go upstairs. Cause otherwise I'm sure a lot of people can like, you know, attest to this. Oh, I'll run this upstairs. You go upstairs and you're like, Oh, let me just do this. Let me do this. And then you're up and down, up and down. You're not, you're not being productive. So I do a whole room cleans and just dive into it and then it's all done. It's so much, it's, it's such a better feeling. It's way more efficient because then, you know, the next day or whatever, you can be like, okay, I'm going to tackle my office. And I've actually planned organizing days in my office to like clean my filing cabinets. Like, cause you know, you get like a little drop zone. Like I'm, I like to be organized and things tidy cause I work better that way. But if sometimes like, you know, weeks get crazy and I'm like, okay, I've just got to like go through this stuff and I'll just for the day or maybe it's an afternoon. I will organize, file every single thing. I'll clean out old files. I'll file it away, put it in banker's boxes, whatever needs to be done. Because if your workspace is a productive space that's organized and you've got a nice little vibe to it, you're going to, I know it sounds so silly, but it's going to really impact your work because when I used to have to work in our basement and it was kind of dark and it was like, you know, it wasn't like what I absolutely loved. I didn't want to go down there. So then what happens is my laptop, my planner, my notebooks, my files are all coming up to the dining room table and that becomes your office. So build yourself a space where you can feel really good to be in and do all your work. And then when you walk away, you know, work is done for that day. It's not silly. I tell Rick all the time, I'm like, I'm schlepping kids around. So that's why I wear my workout clothes all day long. You know, it's like I, my baby literally murdered a yogurt on my couch yesterday it was everywhere and I was just like okay well now we'll do that but it's like I'm not gonna wear one of my cute outfits while I'm scrubbing that couch you know and so it's yeah it's a hundred percent that that's it's why they say dress for the job you want not the job you have it's yeah because once you get yourself in those mindsets once you're you're if I'm in a cute outfit I want to be more productive. I want to be more creative. Totally. I want to I want to be out in f- the front of everything rather than right. if you're feeling like you said in the basement in a dark yeah and you're like, like you're you're like this like you're a troll, troll in the hiding yeah. you. yes <laughs> totally yeah but that you said you're so funny about that with your workout clothes because I wear workout clothes the majority of the time unless I have like meetings or something like that because I'm like I'm not going to get dressed up in my cute clothes when I have like dogs on me because we have our two bulldogs and they're like Velcro dogs they always want to be around you so it's like then I get dog hair on me or if like they don't drool a lot but if they occasionally do I'm like I don't want to have that on my like dress clothes so I just wear my workout clothes it's like easy to you know whatever so I get it you but one get thing it. I do one thing I do always do and I've done this for years even though I'm in workout clothes no matter what I will always get up and put my makeup on and fix my hair because that's one thing that's like I can feel good about it I feel like I'm ready for the day. 
I don't love this whole like let's work in our pajamas from the house all day. Like you don't feel like you're as vibrant then. You know what I mean? If I'm in my pajamas, I've got a cup of coffee and I'm sitting on the couch watching Netflix. Yeah. That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's... Yeah. So just do something that makes you feel good and gets you like in the zone. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think I have taken way too much of your time and I am oh, no. so oh, about it because I feel by. like I know I feel like I could just sit here and talk to you forever. So we just will. I'll just turn this yeah. off. I'll just keep talking forever. <laughs> but I think I'm going to wrap this up with a quote that you said that you might not even think of it as a quote, but you said it okay. and I loved it. So I wrote it down. Okay. Caring about others is the best paycheck there is. Yes, that's true. Yes. I love it. And it goes yeah. perfectly with your new book. So I noticed everything is emilyfrazella.com, right? Yes. Yep. So everything is there. Anything you need, anything yeah. you have that you want to get from this woman. There you go. Yeah. I easy did that because easy. it keeps it easy. Yeah, man. That's another thing. Keep about, think about easy brain and how do people find you? You know, with, when you're building a business or social media following, it can't be like X, Y, Z underscore L, Z hyphen. Like you need to think about everything with your brand that if we, you and I met out, met somewhere, we didn't know each other and you were like, oh, what is, what, what? and I could tell you like, oh, go to emilyforsella.com. Done. It's not, oh, my Instagram is this one. My website is this one. My you know, Twitter is this one, my TikTok is this one, whatever. It's like, try to find where you can get all your social media, all your platforms on one thing because it keeps it so much easier. And, you know, with emilyforsella.com, it's, I just, I was able to just get that because someone bought that years ago before I could get it. And they were like holding it hostage and they wanted like all this money for it. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I know, I know what game you're playing. I'll just, and I, so I would buy websites that were like the name of my products to like lock those in at least. And then I finally, it's so funny, I finally, I think about a year or so ago, just happened again, I was buying some other domains for some other products I, um, that we have coming out. And I like, oh, I want to save Emily. For, and it had just came up like that week. And the guy, I guess, finally decided, because I had gone back and forth like four times with a broker to try to get it. And uh, it was available. So I'm like, no way, no way. So I heard it hit buy and I had to actually call uh, the company to see like, hey, I need to buy this. They're like, okay, yeah, it actually, they're like, oh, that's funny. It just came up uh, like a, a week ago. And I was like, I just happened to randomly check it because I kind of thought it was gone forever, but it made it so much easier because then I can link all of my stuff on that one platform. So I highly recommend you guys trying to get your name or something of that nature so people can find you easily. Okay. Is it bad? Like, am I a bad Excuse person me. that I just did such a happy dance when he let it go and he was trying to be this troll and finally I know. you succeeded. You I won. know. And it's so funny. Like, and I hope that he like, whoever, whoever this troll was knows was that like, you have, damn enough. it. She got it a week later. Like, <laughs> cause he was asking like insane money for it. Like, dude, it's not like chill. It's just I'd so be funny, posting but... that I'd be like, Hey, just so you know, I got mm -hmm. it. Ha ha. Look at no. See, patience paid off for me there. I waited years and it finally got it. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Well, Emily, yeah. thank you so much, so much for being thank on this you. with me. I got way too many things from you and I really appreciate it because I felt like I just got a mini session in a mentor. So <laughs> You're I so really cute. appreciate well, it. Well thank you so much for having me. I really Free appreciate mentor. it. Free <laughs> mentor. <laughs> By the domain. No. <laughs> By the domain. <laughs> yeah, but thank Thanks, you so much for Emily, having me. I, had a blast. I appreciate you.